This next form is a pitcher form and it will utilize several of the techniques you have seen previously with the addition of using a slab form for the spout and cutting a gusset into the side of the piece to make it more asymmetrical. Once again, I'm being very conscious not to pull all the way up through the cylinder when I make the pull on the piece because I need to leave some thickness on the rim. Once the piece gets thinned out and achieves the height I'm looking for, I start to belly out on the bottom of the form. But I'm going to be conscious about how much I push out on the bottom of the, of the form here. Because when I actually push out on the inside of the piece after the form is thrown, it can have a tendency to collapse if I push out on that too much. So it, the form generally comes straight up, then flares out, instead of flaring out at the very base of the form. When I make the marks on the piece, I'm going to make the marks to where they correspond with the exterior profile of the form. This horizontal line will be right next to where the most outer reaching part of the profile is. That's where the handle is going to connect to the side of the piece. So then on the next step, I will push out from the inside. The initial throwing of the form and leaving that part curved inwards accommodates me pushing out on the very bottom of this piece. And that's because the, the bottom has to hold the rest of the weight pushing down on the cyl cylindrical form. Oftentimes on a piece like this, I will manipulate how stiff it is with a heat gun. And if I dry this up a little bit on the exterior, I can then come back and exaggerate the pushing out from the interior of the piece. Okay. So after I'm finished pushing out on the interior of the form, I'm gonna come back and smooth the lip, which I will do again later. And I'm gonna look at the form, and actually there's a little air bubble in there, so I'm gonna cut a little dart or a gusset out of the piece. And this gusset corresponds with the profile of the form, the exterior profile of the form. So where the form tapers in, that's where the actual gusset or dart is cut from. This will be scored. I will then take some slip from my throwing water and rub it in the scored area. And I can then push the form together, give it a little press, and then this will be later reinforced on the interior um, so that it doesn't pull back apart because once again, clay has that molecular memory. It wants to pull back apart the way it was originally before I pushed it together. Finally, I will come back and undercut the form.
The undercut serves several functions. Holds the glaze. If the glaze runs, creates an angle at the bottom of the piece that relates back to the way I've treated the lip with the angle. And it also creates a shadow at the base of the piece so the piece doesn't look like it's just sort of growing out of the table. So at this point, I've actually taken this marker cap and pressed the end of it into the buttons on the piece in an effort to create more interest on the buttons. And this is just a really handy way to get a little stamp, simple stamp for these buttons. I will take, um, take apart a pen and you have different size circles and pieces that can be pushed into the piece. So this part here, I can use this little bitty circle here which creates one little stamp or the tip of this pen which makes another little mark. I could even use this spring here. This is a little larger circle and this one is yet another size. So there are a lot of possibilities in this just tearing one little pen apart. So the next step here on the picture is to actually take this area that's been joined together from that gusset or sort of dart shape that was cut out of it and come back and reinforce that with a coil. So real quick, we'll slip that and push the coil into place and blend it. So now I'm going to make the handle for this piece and I'm going to play with the negative space that's been created by that gusset that's cut out of the side of the piece and I want a handle that flows up sort of off this rim area and then connects back to that line created to the outer edge of the form. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a handle and as I'm pulling the handle I like to pull on one side and then the other. And what that does is it creates a profile in the cross section of the handle that tapers down this direction and this direction. That then relates back to the way that rim tapers and this cut edge, this undercut edge here. So you have a relationship between the lip, the foot, and the handle. So I'm now going to score the surface where the handle will connect to and I will score the surface of the handle where it's going to connect to the piece. A little bit of slip. I'm then going to take that thick part of that handle and push it into place and wiggle it around. Now that the handle is connected, I'm going to go ahead and smear the handle from the clay into the body of the piece. That'll give me a really good solid connection so that the handle doesn't pull away from the form when it's fired or when it dries. And this particular handle, I want it to look like it's flowing out of the form and then back into the form. I'm now pulling that thickness of where the handle was connected to the body of the piece out into the handle. So when I get the handle to the thickness that I'm looking for, I'm going to start considering the negative space created by the form of the handle, this space in here. Pull that off here. So the entire presence of the piece can be changed by pulling the handle up like this or down like this. Notice how this has a different effect than this. I will go ahead and score where the handle is going to connect back to the piece here. And the handle. A little bit of slip. I'm now going to push that handle on there and wiggle it around a little bit. Make sure that it has a good strong connection. So the final part of the handle on this piece once it's stiffened up just a little bit, is to take a small coil, roll it up, and put it into this little negative space here. 
This helps reinforce the handle connection and it makes it seem as if there's a little more of a flow from the bottom of, of the handle into the piece. So the last part of this is to add the spout to the piece. And I've laid out a slab here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the spout in place. Trace where the connection will be. It's a very subtle sound, but I'm actually hearing the slip squish out between the two pieces. The final step on the pitcher is to take a coil and put it on the inside of the piece to where it spans the gap between the body of the form and the slab spout. And the last part of this is this little seam here on the top bothers me because this slab originally started out flat. So it's gonna wanna return to its flat position when it fires. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little element in here that spans the gap between the spout and the body of the pitcher. <laughs> 